Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot. You will be seeing this on June 20th. Um, I am recording this on the Monday in the afternoon, um, Mountain Daylight Time. So first, for uh, all of you who have been concerned and worried about the forest fires in Alberta, it started raining here on, I think it was Saturday late afternoon, maybe. And it wasn't a downpour and it wasn't a shower. It was steady rain, a soaking rain. It stopped raining where I am here in sort of central Alberta, um, sometimes this morning. Uh, the system, which is absolutely massive, is continuing on its way um, up north, where there are northwest, so there's more fires up there. Edson, which was one of the last towns or cities to be kind of declared, you know, at risk from fire, is now been declared a um, a local disaster because they have flooded. So. So we've had lots and lots of rain. Apparently, it's actually going to start raining again tonight and taper off sometimes on Tuesday. Um, but we are, I i can't imagine how a forest fire could actually survive this. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I got to figure. Um, so that's that. So thank you very, very much for your concern. Um, but we are safe here. and. Um, Aside from Atlas being a little bit confused about why when he runs on the grass, it splashes at him, we're all fine. Okay. So I'm not going to do a tarot reading today. I'm kind of going to do a channeled reading. And this is kind of what's prompting it. So earlier today, actually, I had occasion to be talking about um. The, the fourth dimension shift. And I was talking about how Kellyanne Conway, whether she recognized it or knew it or not, has actually described what we are going through when she said, well, this is an alternate reality. With this split, with the increase in... Um, that vibrational energy that is shifting. And like a lot of us don't feel the energy. It's just, it just is, okay? Um, but what's happening is there really is becoming two realities on the planet. So we have those people who are shifting into higher vibrational dimensions, here, okay, and then you have the ones who are still in that third dimension, lower dimension energy here. And so what you are having is the beginning, literally, of alternative reality. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because it has become more and more apparent that and, and this is going on sort of globally, okay? But certainly in the United States, um, it has become really, really apparent that that's exactly what you people are living with. You are living kind of betwixt and between these two realities. So let me give you an example. Lots of people, lots and lots of people, have either taken the time to read the uh, 37 count indictment and if you haven't just look it up it's a fast read uh it's fascinating having said that um they've looked at the pictures they've seen it on the news they have commented about chandeliers in the bathroom okay the other day i saw a blip of an interview with this lady with her red mega hat on and the interview guy had a picture of the bathroom with all the boxes. And he basically said to her, well, this is, this is the picture. How do, you, how do you not acknowledge that? And she said, that picture is a fake because there's no way President Trump would be having that kind of boxes in a bathroom. Alternate reality. That's what we're dealing with here. 
So as we're going forward, because certainly right now it does not appear as if um, it's going to change that much. Because those people who are living in that vibration seem to be stuck there. So let's sort of ask Spirit and share with us some of what we can anticipate as this energy shifts continue, as Trump continues to get it, you know, arrested and arraigned on all kinds of indictments, and the election, you know, comes closer and closer day by day. So let's just take a look at that, shall we? All right, so. Um, by the way, for those of you who may not have seen it, in a poll, um, I think it was done by um, Quinnipiac, Quinnipiac, whatever it's called, um, Joe Biden is leading Donald Trump by four points. Okay, so that's good news. All right. So, Spirit, how do we handle, how do we cope with kind of the dual realities that we are seeing when we look at these two different political parties and these two different realities. So the very first thing you have to understand is that in some ways, there are almost three realities within the political sphere. There is the reality that's, you know, subjective or objective and looks at the facts and figures and says, okay, this is our reality. Yep, climate change is real. Yep, Trump absolutely would not give back those documents, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's the Democrats. Then there is the Republicans. Now, I'm not talking about the mega Republicans. I'm just talking about the normal Republicans, if any of those are left, who are still in a place where they're trying to not outwardly condemn Trump, but also, you know, kind of, they're sitting on a fence, right? Um, they they don't want to condemn him because he, for all intents and purposes, is the leader of the Republican Party. But they also can't stand there and say that the picture was fake. Okay, and then there's this third group, which are the real magas. Now, I don't know if people like, you know, um, Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and, um, okay, uh, that, that Goldberg, is that his name? I think he actually believes it. I think he actually, actually believes it. But I'm not so sure that those politicians necessarily agree that Trump lost the 2020 election, which of course we all know is a lie, um, if they agree with it or they just sort of determined that it is politically advantageous to them. I suspect more of that. However, the people who are gobbling up this nonsense that they spew, they believe it. They absolutely believe it. The picture was a fake. Trump didn't do it. If he did do it, he was allowed to do it. He was entitled to do it. It was his right. He really can declassify documents. Just be thinking about it, you know, randomly. Maybe, well, he's in the bathroom. I don't know. So these are the, the different energy vibrations that we are dealing with. So... Let's start kind of at the higher vibration. So what you have are more and more people starting to recognize, even perhaps people who think Biden is too old or, you know, he shouldn't run again or they'd love to see somebody younger. Yeah. But he's going to and he's not getting younger. OK, that's just the reality. But he is the man for the job right now because of the vast amount of political experience he has. So what's happening is people are slowly starting to tune in to the fact that there have been a tremendous amount of strides forward under 
his leadership. He's accomplished more than they're saying pretty much any other president has, except maybe um, Roosevelt or somebody. So people slowly are starting to wake up to that. Maybe some of the you know, money that has been dispersed for, um, you know, roads and bridges and whatever. Maybe they're starting to see those improvements. Maybe they're able to work in those in those areas. Um, but slowly but surely, people are starting to say, okay, he's what we've got. Instead of complaining that there isn't somebody younger, we're all just going to start saying a quick prayer for his health and his vitality and his longevity. because. He still is what we need in order to move things forward in a way that, frankly, serves the highest number of people. And that is how Khan, as he has now kicked off his campaign, he really is talking about these are all the things we have accomplished and these are the things we sort of want to accomplish. And so if you want us to accomplish those, you need to reelect me and you need to reelect every Democrat you can find. Then you have the, the, the next group of Republicans who frankly are terrified that they are going to get stuck with Trump. And they can objectively look at what has happened to the party. And sort of lay a great deal of it at his doorstep. Now, make no mistake, they still love Mitch McConnell stacking the courts, okay? They still love a lot of policies and initiatives that a lot of people find backward, like the abortion bans, okay? like overturning Roe v. Wade, although, as everybody has said, that is actually going to continue to come back and bite them in their butt. So they're scared because DeSantis is losing momentum, and he was sort of their hope. Um, you know, that's what you get for betting on a horse that you haven't looked at. So they're scared they're going to be stuck with Trump for four more years, and more... They're actually more scared that they also are going to start feeling that their political, you know, careers are in jeopardy. Aside from a lot of, I mean, a lot of them are in deep red states. But listen, there's a lot of Republicans. And then there's some MAGA people. Now, granted, they're, they're what, I think 7 million of them they, was the estimate. But they're not all the Republicans. So there are even Republicans, certainly Republican women, who are just as upset and angry and annoyed as with, with the, um, the abortion situation as any other woman. So they're kind of functioning and operating in a place of terror. And then the third group is operating from a place of delusion. They are in a reality where the reality that everybody else sees doesn't exist. But the reality they subjectively believe, because they're being told to believe that, I mean, it's gospel, okay? They, they don't even question it. And they don't even think about how they have to twist and convolute their mind to come up with some sort of answer regarding, you know, the indictments or, you know, other, other policies, other things that have been done. They just, it just gets, keep getting twistier and twistier in their head until honestly, even they don't remember the original premise. Okay. But they do believe everything that's coming out of certain Republicans. They certainly believe everything that's coming out of Trump, except for maybe those people in the diner who he walked in on and said, food for everyone, and then, of course, did not pay a bill. I guess he didn't mean, I will get food for everyone. I think he just meant it as everyone here should eat. I'm not really sure. 
So having clarified all of that, let's look energetically at where we're going and, and that journey. So as we move closer and closer towards this fourth dimension, and listen, it's sort of a misnomer to say closer and closer and closer because this is a long journey. This is a marathon, not a sprint. The energy is not going to change in a finger snap. It is not going to change before your very eyes. It is a slow and gradual thing. And those who are ascending to the fourth dimension don't necessarily know they are. They just know that they have a kind of clarity and a kind of base um, that is just of a higher vibration. It is more loving. It is more tolerant. It is more inclusive. Um, they see the world with a clarity that perhaps they did not see before. So that energy continues to build. It builds globally and it builds in the United States. There is going to be, you know, conflict between the highest vibration and the lowest vibration because it doesn't matter what gets said unless in the lower vibrations they They don't believe what they're hearing, and they believe 100% what they're hearing. So there is always going to be that anger and that feeling of injustice and that feeling, you know, that, that Trump is being railroaded and it was a witch hunt. Those people are not going to let go of those feelings. But remember this, by and large, those people, and we are speaking in generalities, but those people are already angry. They already feel like they have been left behind. They already feel that their voices haven't been heard. And unfortunately, Donald was very, he's very, very good at reading a room. He's very, very good at latching on to the one thing that's going to grab and hold your attention. And that is why when he says his next presidency is going to be a revenge presidency, these people think that the revenge is for what's been done to them. And they're not understanding that the revenge is all about whatever um, Trump perceives as, as the problem. So you can look forward to this, this sort of continued kind of imbalance. And the best way to deal with, with that, if you're, if you're moving towards or you've just entered the fourth dimension, is to simply send light to the other vibrations. Because it's the other levels of consciousness, right? The other actual levels of their perception of reality. Because no one is going to leave that spot because that is where they feel and believe that they have become empowered. Whether it is, you know, boycotting advertisers who are um, perhaps a little too inclusive or, you know, businesses, companies, that kind of thing. Whether it is feeling like they can ban any book they want because, by the way, this is me talking. Did you hear that there was somebody in, I don't remember what red state it was, who wanted the Bible banned because of... Um, Lurid behavior and something else. You have people, moms out there screaming about banning a book, and then you say to them, what specifically did you object to? And their answer is, I don't know. I haven't read the book. I just want it banned. So that's going to continue until the, the vibrational energy overall shifts. And we're going to see it. Believe it or not, 
is within Republican ranks, within Republican and independent people. Stop for a moment and think about all of the Republicans who have left the Republican Party because they can't tolerate what's going on. Look at the independents who have left the Republican Party. And they, they see a different vision. Where that shift in consciousness is going to come from is actually from Democrats who are continuing to move towards it. Republicans who are, 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 are kind of in this place where they're going, everything is so out of control. We have to somehow find a bit more balance. And this is not going to happen overnight because, as I've said before, Republicans have lost their spines. They don't know where they misplaced them, but they're gone. But there's a lot of Republican voters out there who don't like what they're seeing. Ultimately, those people known as MAGAs are going to continue in this kind of circular journey that they're on where everything can be justified, where everything is fake, it's false, it's a lie. They're going to stay in that place, possibly for the rest of their lives. Some of them, as Trump does not win the presidency, some of them are going to already start to just let go a little bit. If Trump gets the presidential nomination, or he's the nominee for um, uh, for the Republican Party, and he does not win, which is the truth, he's simply not going to win, but he will pull out that playbook of this is fake, this is phony, because you know why? It doesn't matter that the rest of the world rolls their eyes and shakes their head. They believe him. And they're the ones who can't afford to, but are sending him donations. Now, the other thing to anticipate is between now and you know, kind of when that nomination happens. There are going to be more charges coming against Trump. The big donors are going to continue to be very reluctant to back him. And so you're going to see a lessening of that sort of insanity. But it will not go away. It will not disappear. And they will scream and they will scream loud. And they will be encouraged to scream by people like Trump and Carrie Lake and uh, Matt Bates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar. That's his name. Um, they're going to be encouraged to continue to scream and yell. So. As things move forward, right now, energetically, it, it feels sort of like a 50-50 that Trump is going to get the nomination. It still feels that there is somebody kind of in the wings who may yet come up, out, or somebody who starts to rise within those who have already announced. But either way, Remember this, the light must always win over the darkness. And so the more light we surround ourselves with and the more light that we send to those of lower consciousness in their alternate reality is helpful in moving the energy forward to a higher place 
moving the people into a higher perspective and understanding. Because there is no going back. You need to remember that you have all of these soul groups who have been born, who are on the planet, who are now in their 20s to newborns, who are coming in with a very, very different vibrational energy. And they don't have a great deal of tolerance for the way things are or the way things have been because they have seen the result of what was and they're not liking it. So whether you get it or not, this shift is happening. And so it's important to keep your focus on that which is light Keep your focus on sending light where it needs to go, where it can do the most good, and surrounding those people who are in the light, like the Bidens, like Jack Smith, like Fonnie Wills, etc. Keep them in the light so that they can continue to restore a sense of calm and restore a sense that hmm, crime doesn't pay. Eventually, crime will get you. We hope this has been helpful. We hope this brings you some clarity because rest assured, as you go through the summer and there are more indictments, the crazy quota is going to continue to increase, which is why the calm quota, the reality quota, must rise to the occasion anger and frustration are not part of higher consciousness they are part of that lower consciousness keep your thoughts filled with light keep your energy filled with light and while this process has been very very slow Take comfort from the fact that it is now moving forward. And that is the message for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it maybe gives your heart a lift. I hope it helps you sort of, you know, calm and understand that this is part of a process that we're all going through and living through. I will be putting out some minis later on this week. Um, right now, I'm honestly not sure when they're going to be released. I haven't done them yet. Um, but you can look forward to those coming out a little later on. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for spending some time with me. Until next time, take care. Be well. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.